since my head is itchy. Hey everyone, I'm Yingyi and welcome or welcome back to the Noodle Kids Knitting Podcast. Uh, today we're gonna do not a regular podcast. Since if you saw my last episode, I'm taking a break-ish on knitting just to give my arm and wrist and hand a bit of rest. So we're gonna talk about my knitting clients today because what else to do if you can't knit, right? Yeah, I've been pretty miserable because like after work, I'm just like, well, guess I can't knit now. What now? <laughs> so I, I've been spinning a little bit. I think that's a little less rough on my arm, but still not too much. And I've been doing a lot of stretches and icing it, drinking a lot of water, etc. Just I just want to feel better so I can keep knitting. But yeah, that's like one of the things that I do is I like to plan stuff even though sometimes I don't necessarily work on them or buy the yarn for it. Still like the planet. It's pretty fun. So this is somewhat of a stash tour. It's like not my full stash at all. It's just stuff that I already have in my stash, plus stuff that I want to buy to work on the pattern with. Yeah, some of these are stuff that I thought about, things that I have in my stash, and then I would either already have the pattern for or purchase the pattern for so let's get into it by the way i'm wearing my oslo sweater by petite knit today so this is what it looks like on me the body is pretty wide and the sleeve has less ease than the body but still pretty comfortable and all of the info about the sweater is going to be linked in the cart I'm also wearing a hat today. This is the Easy Peasy Beanie by... I never remember people's name. I have my notebook today, so I'm gonna be able to tell you the pattern designers that I want to knit from. And hopefully I'll have the Yarn Dyer's name as well. But yeah, this is a free pattern on Lovecraft, and the yarn used is the Wondering Flock Cosmic Tie-Dye. It was supposed to be a scrap project, but I ended up having to buy another skein of yarn to finish the decrease on top. But yeah, I quite like it. It's not the warmest hat that I can have, but it does the job. So I have my little notebook here. Uh, I just want to mention for people who are also interested in stationery like I was, still am, but just not as crazy right now. Uh, this is from Sticky Rice Co. They're a uh, American company, a uh, small business, always, and they sell like really cute stationaries. So this is one of their notebooks that they had, and they designed all their characters. You have the bear here that's like Rice the Bear, and you have the frog that's like Macho the Frog, and then you have the bunny, I think it's Ichigo the bunny, etc. So they have like a bunch of cute characters, and they're all like fluffy animals. So they have plenty of designs, washi tapes, stickers, planners, accessories, like keychains or sometimes pouches and bags. So yeah, go check them out. I'm gonna link them. And the pages are dotted and I can use fountain pen on these. So that's pretty cool. And if I look down, it's because I'm checking on my notebook what I'm gonna talk about. So first thing, is the Waffaloo sweater. It's been planned for a long time, but I was hesitant to knit it because the pattern is not size inclusive. And I'm not sure if it's because the pattern designer just didn't have the resource for it. Most times it's that's the reason, but it's still not really an excuse because like if you do this full time, you would be able to learn how to grade it and tech edit it by yourself even though you still need somebody else to check your patterns but still like it's a good start to at least have the sizes available even though you don't have the testers so i'm gonna knit the pattern but i'm not going to like promote it too much i'm mostly going to talk about the yarn so i have the yarn here what i'm gonna plan to knit it with is uh the wandering flock spring fever 
So I mentioned this yarn before. This is their one of their spring colorway in, in spring 2022, I want to say, 2021. I have no idea. I bought it quite a while ago, a sweater quantity of it, when they first came out with it. So it's a variegation yarn with like a neutral pink and some blue, purple, and a brighter pink. It looks really pretty in the skein as well as knitted up. I already tried to swatch something with it. So originally the plan was to make the fall end cardigan by Soup Knits. But I didn't like how it looked with this yarn. So I still have the swatch. I didn't unravel it yet. Previously, I even made another swatch. That's why it's like a separate tiny ball. So this is the swatch. Ah. This was for the Fallen Cardigan. It's a broken rib. Is it broken rib? Se seed rib? Broken rib? Question mark? But yeah, I didn't really like how it looked. I think the variegation just distracted the pattern a lot. So I decided to make it with another yarn, which is what I originally planned for my Waffle Loop sweater. And I'm going to talk about it in my next podcast when I have more stuff to show after I feel a little better with my arms and stuff. But uh, yeah, originally this was going to be a Jenny sweater by Petite Knit, which I thought I bought the Jenny cardigan because I was in a cardigan phase. And yeah, turned out I didn't buy the cardigan pattern. I just bought the sweater pattern. And then I realized that it's not a DK weight sweater. It's more like a fingering weight sweater. Because um, because of the stitch pattern that it has, your swatch would be a lot tighter than what it's supposed to be. So there's a lot of stitches. Like a lot of stitches in the pattern. I looked at the pattern and I was like, no, I'm not going to do this. Plus it's like the pattern is a, a little bit like a rib, but it has a variation it's it's like it has the loop around stitch i don't know what it's called but the whole sweater it's pretty much going to be a rib sweater so i was intimidated by it and i didn't do it so yeah this is the plan for the spring fever i'm really excited because the yarn is just oh so cute uh yeah i'm gonna have to make a new swatch with this we'll see what happens maybe the stitch pattern is still too much with the variegation. Oh, did I say that the waffle loop sweater is by other loops? Probably not, but it's by other loop. So next thing I want to make is the road trip tee. It's a pattern by Ozetta and it's a sport weight uh, short sleeve shirt. So what I plan to use for this pattern is a yarn that I already ordered, but it's in pre-order, so the dyer is currently dyeing it up. It's from Camp Fiber Yarn in their Winter Woodlands co collection, the Colorway Winter Sunrise. It's the only color that I wanted, really, really wanted in this collection, and yeah, I got it. I also got another color just to get free shipping. Because, yeah, I'm a sucker for free shipping. And, yeah, it was actually, like, a difficult purchase because I had planned for another sweater, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. I had planned for that sweater to purchase yarn from this collection, and the color was just perfect. And I keep trying to find dupes for it, but the... The only color that is like the exact spot on is not hand dyed, which I don't have a problem with, but it's missing the subtle variegation in the tonal yarn. And I'm going to talk about it in a bit. So uh, I got the Winter Sunrise in Merino Sport and I got four skeins of it. So it's going to be just... Uh, actually, if I get three skeins of it, it's, gonna, it's going to be like 20 yards more than what I need, which I didn't want to run the risk of running out of yarn because it's a limited time collection even though maybe um Laura is gonna have Laura of Camp Fiber Yarn is gonna have 
some like one of the kind but I don't want to bet on it so I got four yeah I'm just excited for the yarn to come and the winter sunrise is a variegation yarn of like a lavender purple with a neutral pink from memory with like speckles of stuff but I'm gonna put images somewhere so you can see moving on next thing I want to make is the halibut sweater by Caitlin Hunter so this one I'm going to make in a size 2 because this the positive ease is actually pretty large in the sweater this is the sweater that I plan to buy the other color in the winter woodlands but I ended up not buying it it's uh, the color that I wanted to buy is the main color of the sweater is the crisp and cold color and I needed to buy five skeins with the recommended yardage in the pattern but yeah nine skeins of hand dyed yarn was just out of budget and I gave up on buying it and it's like I'm still kind of sad about it but at the same time I'm like it's a tonal yarn you can find a close enough dupe that you're gonna be happy with so you're gonna be fine <laughs> Uh, so the closest dupe that I actually found is from Santa's Garn, and it's in Double Sunday because I need a DK yarn. And it's the color 6580. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce the name. You guys know I'm terrible at pronouncing names, so no. And it's almost the same color as the crisp and, crisp and cold. Another name that I can't pronounce. Extra sprinkles? No. No, I can't pronounce it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the color is like a really deep gray that has blue tones. I'm gonna put both image of the Santa Scarn and the Crisp and Cold here somewhere so you can see the comparison. But what I love about the Crisp and Cold is that it has very subtle variegation because it's a tonal yarn. The Double Sunday since is like a commercial yarn. Is it commercial Santa Scarn? Probably I think yarn it's not um it doesn't have variegation it's like solid color in every skein which i know a lot of people love it i just find it boring after a while so i need that subtle variegation but didn't have the money so i didn't get it i also have other colors that are like more or less the same sometimes they are a bit more blue a bit more gray a bit lighter a bit darker but yeah if i can get the santa's garn 6580 I'd be happy about it I think and the contrast color for the halibut is going to be something from my stash and it's a scrap so it's going to be this wildflower yarn unicorn poop and also DK so this is a awesome neon rainbow color yarn and I have I think this is about like 30 40 grams or even 50 grams and I have a whole other skein left. So I'm gonna be using that up. I just need to buy the dark color yarn, which when I have the budget, I'll do it in the future. I don't have it now, but that's in queue. So yeah, that's the third thing that I want to start. Let's move on to some summer knits, even though it's gonna go straight back. to long sleeve after yeah uh one thing that i planned when i was in like a summer knits phase in the middle of december january was the 9 p.m tank by tip knits and the yarn i'm going to be using is the ilmani sabri color so this one that i purchased from Espas Pico and i talked about it i'm going to link that podcast so you can see the yarn shop a little bit too but I think that would just be like a cute tank top for summer because uh, what's the blend it's organic cotton and baby alpaca so it's gonna be comfortable for a summer breezy let's say hi let's say hi to everybody hello so the next thing I want to knit is the other raglan by Ivy and Autumn so this is a 
close to body fingering way top down sweater that has like a mock neck which is what I've been looking for forever because I want to keep knitting fluffy sweaters such as this one and I also want to like get mohair if I want to because sometimes uh, some dyer only offers stuff in mohair and not Siri alpaca and sometimes mohair is also cheaper and it has more yardage so yeah uh this is going to be like an undershirt type sweater because it's going to be fingering weight and it's going to be a uh, mock neck and long sleeve so it's going to be super good to put under any sorts of scratchy sweater and i also already have the yarn for this i just i don't have the needle free for it and it's going to be a long project because it's going to be fingering weight and it's going to be a lot of stitches so um if i die in the process it's probably worth it because i always wanted this kind of sweater and i don't want to buy it from fast fashion because they don't use like the correct material for it they always use like polyester or polyamide or some plastic stuff which sometimes it's okay but they don't really do well in the wash and i find that they shrink up a lot when i wash them even though i didn't even put it in the dryer they just they just kind of die after a few wash so i want to make like a good sweater that i can wear under big sweater or a scratchy sweater and not have to worry about it dying on me so yeah enough of that ramble let's get into the yarn that i want to use for it i want to use a uh, wildflower yarn in the color blossom so i've mentioned this question mark did i mention this in a previous podcast somewhere at some point uh but yeah this is a colorway from wildflower yarn and it's literally just like my dream colorway because it's a soft cherry blossom pink with speckles of a little bit of green and a darker pink and i have a sweater quantity of this as i have four fingering weight skeins so it's going to be plenty enough for this sweater and yeah i'm just i need a swatch for it and i probably need to get another pair of chiagu because uh, my three millimeter is still on another vest literally another vest the name of the pattern um yeah that hasn't been going forward i'm not sure if i want to frog it or just keep going because i haven't been reaching for it i'm not sure we'll see yeah i have to swatch for this and i think it's going to be fine with three millimeter we'll see i'll update you if i started moving on next one is a really interesting pattern that i wanted to make it but i doubted my ability to make it but now i'm like okay yeah i kind of want to make it and i think it's going to be a awesome statement piece and layering piece for spring it's the rumble tea by lydia morrow and i have the yarn for it already so i have um this one is from Emily and Philomen. It's from a scrap, which I still have most of the skein. And I think it's the line is called Josephine and it's 100% untreated merino, so it's not super wash. And these two are from Fireweed Fabrico, which I mentioned in the last podcast. So this is these are both from their Star Trek collection. This is um Crystalline Entity and this is there's Coffee in that Nebula. And I think this is going to be a super interesting con uh, conversation, combination. So I think this is going to be a super interesting combination of colors. And what I love about this pattern is that um, Lydia provides you a coloring sheet so you can actually plan out your color and just like visually have a physical piece of what the, pat what the pattern and colors are going to look like. So yeah, I think it's going to be pretty interesting. I saw people use like variegation yarn in their pattern and I quite like the end result. 
And I think it's gonna match quite well with this because they're both like a light and bright yellow even though this one is a little a little more orange and this one is more neon. And I think this soft um, variegation is going to be a good contrast for the rest of the yarn. And even though these two, like the neon and the, and the purple, is gonna be about the same value, I think it's still good enough because the color saturation is totally different. So yeah, I think I'm gonna have to download like the coloring sheet and just put in the colors and see what happens. I will keep you updated. We're already near the end. I have two more things that I want to make. So the first thing is the Framework Roulette by Jessie Maid. And I've been eyeing that pattern for so long. And at first, I didn't want to get it because it's like reverse stock in it as the outside. But I think it's knitted like reversed. So you knit the whole pattern and you wear it with the purl side out. So yeah, I got the pattern. And I've always been wanting a bralette that's like knitted. Yeah, pretty excited for it. I'm going to use a uh, Jador Fiber Mrs. Potts for it. So I only have one skein of this. And I keep saying this, but like all of these yarns are from my previous podcast because they've been sitting in my stash for a while and I just don't know what to use with it. So if you're interested in seeing like more descriptive content, about the yarn, the color, the maker, my plans, not my plans, I'm talking about my plans, my like how I got got it and etc stuff. <laughs> you can go check out my previous podcast. And if you want to see like the latest stuff that I've gotten or like what I've been doing, you can follow my Instagram, which is going to be linked down below. But yeah, a quick overview of the Mrs. Potts is a muted, sort of like a vintage color inspired by the character in Beauty and the Beast. And it's just like, it's, it has such an antique feeling. I love it so much. Like all the colors are muted and it has like purple, pink, and yellow. And it's, I, I love it. I got the yarn because I love it so much. And I think it's gonna be awesome for a bralette. So last thing, I have several options of yarn for this, but I have a few sock pattern that I want to make, which is like textured or lace socks, like I mentioned in the last episode. Uh, so two patterns that I saw from This Handmade Life is a Little Hocus Pocus and Cozy Autumn Socks. They're both gonna be here. And I have a few options that I have for it. I originally only have two, but then I was touring my yarn stash and found out that I have more options for it. So first, I thought that I could use the Baby Yoda set from Ba Realis Fibers. It's just gonna be, I think it's gonna be an awesome texture of socks because this is softly variegated and it has like interesting minis. Or maybe I can use other minis or just like not use them, not use the minis at all. It's gonna be a really cool socks even just by itself. And then of course we have Yue Lao from Fireweed Fiber Co. This was talked about in the last episode, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much. And we have Gingerbread Cookie by Small Fish Yarns. This is also going to be a textured sock. I think it's gonna look awesome as a textured sauce. I think it's gonna look awesome as a pair of textured socks. So yeah, it's just like gingerbread cookie color with like speckles of like spices color. And last thing was also mentioned in the last podcast and it's the Lichen and Lace February sock train. I think they already posted the picture of what the color looks like, but if you didn't see it, or you don't want to look at the yarn, skip like five seconds. So it's this. Okay, the yarn is gone. <laughs> I talked about it in the last podcast and yeah, there was also a time, time stamp on the screen last time. So if you want to skip to that time, uh, you could do that. 
and yeah I think that color would be awesome for a textured socks because it's heavily variegated and if it has like a cable texture I think it's gonna feature it super well so that's it for my plans that I probably can't start until like a few months because I still have a lot of whips going on and I also started another whip when I was feeling a little bit better and then it got terrible again <laughs> not like too bad but it's just I feel strained so I stopped and yeah hopefully I'll be able to finish those whips and I'll be able to show you them as finished objects and we can move on to other whips and more exciting stuff so that's today's episode thank you so much for watching I hope you're having a good day night and stay safe drink water I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Wait. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat>